This week, I'm going to discuss the infamous bipolar disorders. When you hear bipolar, what is the first thing that comes to mind? You're hot, then you're cold, you're yes and you're no, you're in and you're out, you're up and you're down. From the Katy Perry song. By the way, thank you Katy Perry for that fantabulous song. Uh, so anyway, sorry about my singing, but you get the point. So anyway, uh, what we're going to focus on is not the major bipolar. When you think bipolar, like on the movies, you know, they're up all night, they're freaking out, taking apart a car, you know, buying 5,000 vacuum cleaners. And then when they crash and burn, you know, they're depressed, they want to kill themselves, you know, like what you see in the movies. We're not talking about that. We're talking more uh, about the typical cyclothymic disorder. Uh, that's what we're going to focus on today. So let me give you the fast and furious rundown of what a cyclo cyclothymic disorder is. So don't mind me, I'm going to start reading off of a paper real quick. So um, this is what I see in many addictive behavior patients that comes through my doors. This disorder is a genetic predisposed disorder so meaning this is a family history of mental health dis disorders or issues and there is a higher rate of addictive behavior history in the family so what that all that means is that somewhere along the line there is mental health disorder issues and there is a higher rate of addictive behavior so when I ask is there any familial history or is there any mental health history or addictive history? There is more times than not, there's going to be something along that line. And a lot of times there is bipolar history somewhere along the line. So thank you, family, for giving me bipolar disorder. That's what you tell your family when, you know, you go back and you find out that you've been just diagnosed with bipolar. That's what you usually say. So many people with bipolar disorder is misdiagnosed with, guess what, ADD and ADHD. That's usually what happens. And a lot of times it's when they're kids, you know, so usually ask your parents, was I ever diagnosed as having ADD or ADHD when I was young? And they usually say, yeah, when you were young, you couldn't sit still. You was all over the place. They are usually get misdiagnosed. And even as an adult, you get misdiagnosed with ADD and ADHD. Interesting, right? Mm -hmm. And you will then ask me, well, why? Why do you get misdiagnosed with ADD and ADHD? Well, here's the reason. The reason for that is because of the rapid speech, the inability to focus on any subject matter, and the jumping from one subject matter to another, which is pretty normal when you're in a manic state, and um, the need for less sleep. So you really, when you're in a manic state, you really are so excited, and you're in that manic state that you really don't need sleep all of a sudden. So say uh, you usually sleep eight hours or six hours, you're sleeping four hours or three hours. Okay. So that's usually what ends up happening and you end up having this manic stages and so people will have more of a likelihood to misdiagnose you with having ADHD or ADD because of those um, symptoms. So here's something else that I want to talk about. So let me find my place real quick. Uh, oh, statistics. This will be interesting. you find this really interest, interesting because I did. It says, interestingly enough, the average age for the first signs to appear for the cyclothymic disorder is six and a half years of age. Wow, really? So that's why the ADHD and ADD misdiagnosis. Holy crap, who knew, right? Six and a half years? And here's the other statistics, which is really interesting. The other statistics that will blow your mind is 60% with bipolar disorder, bipolar 2 specifically, have at least three or more co-occurring disorders. 
So in other words, you have three or more other diagnoses that you are diagnosed with. Okay, whatever. 75% have an anxiety disorder along with your bipolar disorder diagnosis. 37% have a um, substance abuse disorder. And 14%, this was interesting, 14% with bipolar disorder have at least one lifetime eating disorder with binge eating being the most common. And this usually occurs during the depress depressive stage time. And the substance abuse disorder usually will occur during the manic phase. So when you're in your manic phase, when you get all your excited time frame, that's when you're doing your substance abuse, binging kind of deal. So that's pretty interesting, don't you think? So enough of the stats, because you know how stats are. You can go all day long with stats. So the next question is, what does cyclothymic really look like? So a normal day in the life of a, of a cyclothymic individual, because that's what everybody wants to know. So let's not say cyclothymic anymore. Let's say bipolar light. So we're gonna say bipolar light for now on. So here's what I came up with, my little scenario. So I'm gonna read you my scenario of a day in the life of a bipolar light person. And I just took different scenarios from people that came into my practice and I put it all together in one individual. So this is what a normal average day in a life of someone who has bipolar light symptomology. So this is what it looks like. Joe wakes up this morning feeling like he can take on the world but he's not sure why. Last night he felt like any other normal day, like shit was on repeat, wake up, go to work, come home, Watch TV, eat dinner, bathe, bed. Today, new day, new lease on life. Thankful he can hear the trees, the wind. He sees his wife sleeping right next to her. Thankful he can hear her breathing and it makes him feel happy. She's his world and his world is now expanded. He has now created his things to do list. All the things he has put off for the last three months Hell, the last six months. He has enough energy to accomplish it all. No worries, he thinks. It's all good. Everything's good in his life. His wife wakes up and can't find him. She walks downstairs to him cooking breakfast with coffee already made. She notices his speech is kind of fast, but whatever, she can still understand him, so she don't care. Maybe he's in a rush. She don't know. He starts telling her what he has planned. But she's getting confused because he's talking about dry cleaning, to oil changes, to signing up for school, all in one breath. He's like, blah, 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 kind of all over the place. But she understands him, so she's like, whatever. As long as he's getting all the crap done that he's been putting off for a month, three months, six months. Now he's walking out the house without giving her a chance to share what she thinks. Throughout the day, he's getting stuff done and he thinks I'm on top of the world because I'm checking shit off my list. Good job, bro. Before he knows, knows it, he's sitting at the bar, downing six beers and telling everyone over there how he's so happy about what he has been doing. But wait a minute. He's not supposed to be drinking. He's in recovery for the last 30 days for alcohol. Maybe putting... Attending a AA meeting should have been on his checklist, you know, on his checklist, but maybe that should have been a priority, but oh well, she'll understand, so it's all good. It's now 9 p.m. and Joe heads home. His wife, now furious, confronts him. He doesn't understand what just happened. His intentions was good. He was getting things done. He puts himself to bed. The next morning, he slowly gets up, but this time in despair. He's agitated. He looks at his wife. Her breathing irritates him. The curtains moving from the wind irritates him. The alarm clock noise irritates him. He realizes his, his life is on repeat again. 
and he thinks, is this all this is? Groundhog Day, my life being a repeat, nothing matters. He gets up, goes to work, knowing that in his mind it is hopeless as it's a never-ending bullshit cycle. It's a bunch of bullshit. That's what he's thinking. And he thinks to himself, good morning, Joe. Good deal. And that's a pretty much quick version of someone living with bipolar light. You go through this high, like you can take on the world. You have nothing. You have everything to motivate you, but you're not sure like what started the motivation. You just wake up one morning and you're like, Holy shiznits, like what just happened? Like I have all this motivation. I don't know what happened, but it's like this internal high. But you're not really sure exactly what the high is because it's not like a high high, but it's like a high. And those of you that have bipolar light know exactly what I'm talking about. And then somewhere along the line, there's a blow, like something knocks you down from that internal high and you're not sure what knocked you down either. But you wake up all of a sudden and everything freaking irritates you in the world. Like breathing will irritate you. Like everything irritates you. Like even yourself irritates you. you just like, frick. You know, and that's what bipolar light is. So it's not a real, real high and it's not a real, real low. So that's kind of what bipolar light is. And that's kind of what goes on and you know somewhere along the line after you get that high and the low somebody presses the reset button all of a sudden and then you get to what is your normal whatever that normal is but you don't really ever feel like it's almost like you feel like what's the point in all of this shit you know you get your stuff done you know whatever your normal stuff is because you have to, not because you want to, because you have to get it done. That's what bipolar light is. So what can you do to change this? Well, the good news, it's a neurochemistry disorder. So all that means in simple terms is that there's some neurochemistry stuff going on in your brain and they have medication to help with that. So it kind of put the medication in your brain, all of a sudden it balances out the neurochemistry in your brain, boom. It doesn't mean everything will be fixed because you still have behavioral stuff that you need to deal with, obviously, so that you go therapy for that. And with the medication, with the therapy, you put that together, it should start to help. Now, if you don't want to do that right now because you're like, hell no, I'm not going into therapy, and hell no, I don't want to try medication right now, okay? The next step, what you want to do then is read about it then. Arm yourself with information, you know, do that at least. You know, watch this video is one way, you know, so start doing that. And um, that's my best advice to you right now. Arm yourself with information, read, 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 learn, learn, learn as much as you can. Go on mdjunction.com, that would, might be one good resource for you. Read about others' um, thoughts about what they're going through. You know, it's just go on some online support groups, read out about that, you know, whatever you can, but arm yourself with information. First step in the process. So this is the weekly vlog. And until next time, be safe, learn as much as you can. And until next week, my friends, aloha. Call the doctor, got a case of